future of design. In May 1965, my first day in an architect's office, it was the coming of the progressive architecture. And here we look at Michigan back in a similar time, just down the road in Plymouth, a house on the left, and yes yesterday's cover of Dwell Magazine, Bill Massey's efforts in Michigan again of tomorrow. My roots were in Paulo Solari, working in the dirt, working on his simple things, and vision there, and then a trip to Michigan to work with Gunnar Burkert, so actively involved in this school. But you can see the diversity of the character here and where my roots are and where I come from. It's not hard, easy to figure out, maybe sometimes hard, but with an interest in making, I will always know that the future of design lies in the client. The mayor of a city on the left, the director of a museum, a corporate mogul in his shorts at the construction site under the cranes, and the man in pink that I do not know, but who is my real client. I'm interested in the ordinary becoming extraordinary. The simple idea of masonry that today we could not with all our technology replicate here in Peru, but in my simple way as I look at masonry in my work and the ordinariness of a concrete block becoming extraordinary. A broken block rescued from a landfill being a way for a client that desired stone but could not afford it to have his dream house. A challenge of masons inspired by the modularity of block and the block on the pallet being the model for the structure in the synagogue wall in Arizona, having much stronger implications that reach beyond culture to the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Again, taking not planned drawings and specifications, but making the act of texture a physical act, not a planned act. No drawings for this wall, but three early mornings with that mason working the wall and an architect myself, laying out the patterns of salvage block to levels I could have never drawn, or if I had drawn, never afforded to build. This is the magic of the ordinary becoming extraordinary, one of the great lessons I learned from Paulo Solari. Again, the rigors of sediment and a side becomes the inspiration for a wall of a house. The magic of an engineer and the technology becoming the framework again for that ordinary material, concrete block becoming a home. So the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. As we looked at a library in California most recently, it was Willie on the left who I spent four hours on the top of the scaffold doing the sample on the building face itself. Random patterns, rules of the road established in a short mentoring ship with Willie, he proceeded to lay every tile in four months on the exterior of the Hercules Library. But it's not just about detail, it's about big ideas. The sprawl of Phoenix on the left has become the grounding for a great deal of my life inspired by arcology, city in the image of man. So here we're getting at the complexity, the complexity endeavored on buildings that are about the city and the making of the city. A mesa inspires a library, a cultural building, the central library of the city of Phoenix, again, inspired by that abstract form of the natural geographic for geologic form, because that's what we talked about in Arizona at the time, the landscape. A sketch that takes the pragmatic to the poetic, transforms itself into this scaleless object on the main street of our city, and a place for learning, a place for community. Again, the simplicity driven by budget so often, the ultimate driver of creativity. A simple textured scheme of wall making with a screeded two by six board and the strong backs that would make the texturing of the wall, an abstraction of geology again, rather than Simplicity. The inspiration of the bale and grain elevator sidings as the place and the way and the technology to make a copper skin for this library at a cost cheaper than drive at stucco. It's that sort of curiosity that drives me that I think drives the design and the future of design always. And here we have the skin rising to the sky. A simple, simple techno technological manufacturing technique transformed. Inspired always by the past as we look to the future. Labrousse, his great Bibliothèque Nationale of 1861 on the left, totally in our minds as we created the library of the 21st century on the right. A library celebrating technology of our time and celebrating the light of our place. A way to connect not only with our immediate geography of our moment in time, but striving to be timeless by creating this room that celebrates our place in the universe. Coming together each year at the Solar noon of the solstice, through that small little 
hole, that dot in the blue lens, we are locating this community not in their city or their region, but in the world. Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the, the West, they say, again, a place for a museum, a dark, mysterious black museum growing from the roots of the neon on the main drag of Virginia Boulevard. The work is inspired by this making of place. Always informed by program. The pragmatism of program is what the grounding is. So the simple little square boxes on the left, again by the hand, the hand driven by the mind, the heart, to that hand, creates the sketches and the organization breaking free of any of those boxes that represent that program. These simple high-tech modeling on the right, the simple sketch of hand, I believe that the technology that we have is still no different than the pens and the 4B pencils we once drew with. The computer is a tool, and we are the minds and the hearts that drive those tools. Inspired by nature, the Black Rock Desert, again, becomes a, a metaphor for this museum in closing its own magic treasures. Buildings that are about their function and about people. We work because of our clients, not in spite of our clients. They are the future for everything we will do. These works are about people coming together. The medium of art and light, of human experience, of community memory. That is what the architecture and the design of the future will still always be about. Galleries, changing scales, different venues, this wonderful sort of process of the art museum as a vessel. And again, reaching the, to the horizon, we immediately understand why the building has its form, why it has its color as we look to the horizon, looking beyond to the west and the setting sun. The background of the 20th century architect, the blimpies, the drive through gas station, the format, the foreground of a new contemporary library. Again, a library is a public building on an overlooked site an overlooked site such that it has to be the ultimate cowboy building, the false front of two building, uh, public buildings shown here, a post office and a city hall, inspired this new library for the 21st century. A large scrim with 28-foot glowing letters of 3M reflective tape, the Agave Branch Library, a scrim that can be read from a mile away to place itself as a public building. Inspired by this abandoned history piece, from Western Massachusetts on a trip to see the Shakers, we discovered the abandoned driveway, drive-in movie screen that you see here influences this 48 foot high, again, marquee for a library that is a public realm building. Using those sort of dialogues, the cantilever marquee welcomes you into the sculpted concrete block where the block of the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. The idea of new technologies, new sustainability, and simple construction again, because of budget driving creativity. I think the design of the future is continuing to be that, more so in the last 18 months than even before. And here you can see how light can float with masonry above to form a new identity, a room to discover the future in this library in the suburbs of Phoenix. A torquing, twisting story tower, the back of the scrim, a desert garden, and a story tower where you will discover what the future is all about. Imagine your first trip to the library when you're three years old and you're Simone and you come for a story and how a trip to this space could change your life. That is the future of design, is changing lives and influencing and increasing the quality. And from sunrise to sunset, as the shade and shadow and the sun dapple across our buildings, they create the memories of life. That's what design is about. And design is what we do in the new western city and the American city. This mapping of the growth of Phoenix, the upper center, the pink, barely a mile of population, now the fifth largest city in America and that big black blob in the center. A city that is troubled to know what it wants to be, driven by the car. A city that happened before air conditioning when scale and shade and covered arcades made it all possible to live. A city on the right that in 1921 had 14 streetcars there. And our friends down the road, General Motors, bought up all those streetcar lines so we could have diesel buses. And now we have Wright Stream, Broad Acre City, built in reality. Just want you to see it does exist, unfortunately, not Wright's finest moment. But we have built that future. And it's time to change that future as we speak about the future of design.
and that is Scottsdale, Arizona on the left, and a sprawl of city, 300 foot blocks that goes on to infinity with questionable gas and questionable water, and why is there a city like this in the desert in contemporary times? But we try to make neighborhoods with mixed use and multiple housing. These two projects, this is what the density, the scary density word of Queens and Brooklyn looks like today. This is garden living at four to five stories in the desert. As we seek to solve those issues, we really talk about collaboration because if there's a change in the design of the future, it's more a collaborative world in every way as we come together about, around big round tables with great diversity of team members to make ideas happen. And we gather around empty parking lots left over on the intersections of our towns and our campuses. And we talk about what can a gateway be? What can the future be? As we mix the commerce, we find the lines of desire and we marry again at this ASU Arts and Business Gateway, this collaborative process, academic functions as well as civic functions in a town with no gateway between its, its gown and its town or the town and gown. Again, driven by sustainability with the di diagrams that are integral and it shouldn't be about number counting for lead. It should be about really what do sustainable abilities mean? It's not about your points and your plaque. It's about something much deeper in our future as we look at this design of the future. Canyon, canyons and clouds at the scale of Paris creating a new idea for what urban life at density can be in the sprawling confines or unconfined nature of Phoenix, Arizona. And we look at this, as we look at this project, it becomes about, again, form, technology, evolution, that idea that the ordinary can become extraordinary. These are ideas driven by passion as well as intelligence, creating a new paradigm again of these canyons of glass, floating gardens above covered by clouds of the latest technology that shade from the sun and reach the sky as we try to create an environment that we can look forward to occupying in our desert place. 1912, this was the capital of Arizona on the first day of statehood. As we know, 2012 is not far away, so a vision for a centennial celebration and party is appropriate. This was statehood day, a territorial state house, not a state capital. In 2012, that building hopefully will be EB lead because that's all we can talk about, but it will be a platinum level. There will be green screens, there will be solar photovoltaics, it will be a keystone that we can really talk about solar in a place that we're always asked about it because we have that sun. And here we can look, the new lattice work above these rooftops, the green screening integrating these buildings in, and a whole new way to really talk about what solar energy can mean in a hot, arid place. The old meets the new. Again, a real challenge of the future of design. 7,000 new rooftops, a new streetcar system, new facilities for the homeless shelter, a brownfield turned into a, a tree nursery, all part of a 2020 vision that's at the center. The 20 minute rule is what we're talking about here. The 20 minute rule for a city. But first we look down five lanes of traffic going one way to get you out of town. Is this anywhere America, if you will? But that's the capital of Arizona you're looking at in that distant view. And what can look like in 2012 with any luck is a new parade street with a streetcar that really serves the community with a green screen, platinum rated new buildings of government beyond and a photovoltaic lattice work that's a shade cover to create the new parade street of the city of Phoenix. This is about the opportunities that all of us share. And what we're really looking at is creating and through the future of design cities that we want to be in, cities that are healthy for people. We're looking at a respect for the past as we look at the vision for the future. All these things interrelate. This idea of the 20 minute city is all about the idea that by transit, by bicycle, by foot, in 20 minutes, we can find everything we need in the quality of the city around us to create the good life. There is a city in this country that is close to the 20 minute rule. It's Portland, Oregon. Again, they have reached beyond to create the max, to create the streetcar, to create a bicycle culture and pedestrian neighborhoods where there are restaurants, there are high fashion, there is cinema, there is conversation, there are jobs, there is education close at hand. The future des design in my mind is create the city of the future, which is now. It is totally needed now. 
That is the ultimate sustainability. That is something that has both an aesthetic, a poetic, a pragmatic, a survival reality to it. I really believe that we in this audience and the students that we're looking at beyond these lights, together we can all make that happen. That is what the future of design is about, is creating those great places to live. Learning from the past, building upon that, but building with all our new technology, all our new commitment and understanding of where we are to the future that we all deserve to be part of creating for all those who will inhabit a much more dense world that surrounds us. It's really a privilege to be with all these folks here today. I look forward to a great dinner time conversation and look forward to hearing the presentations that are about to come. So thank you for the privilege to be here, Monica. Special. Thank you.